In this third section, we discuss HA, or High Availability Features Available for Hyper-V. This section is about HA for both Hyper-V and the guest VMs. We have four lessons and I combine both guest and Hyper-V HA features in these lessons. We begin with this video with storage availability. The first topic and lesson covers features available to allow you to perform operations on your storage while maintaining the overall availability of storage to the guest VMs. We begin by reviewing some of the availability features we have seen thus far and then cover storage live migration. I want to begin by making sure we understand the terminology. HA is fundamentally about user experience. The users of your virtual environment expect resources to be available. Business applications are becoming more critical, which means you have to maximize availability of both your Hyper-V fabric, i.e. the storage, compute, and network, as well as the guest VMs. HA does not replace your backups or your DR strategy. These are different things with different business requirements. One key element of HA is the ability to do your typical operations like backups and patches without disruption to resources such as the guest VMs. Microsoft calls this continuous availability. I may not have called these HA or CA features, but we did cover a number of features to help with the overall availability of your underlying storage subsystem. HA or CA begins with the architecture of the storage subsystem. And if you are leveraging the parity or mirroring features provided by Spaces or RAID, then you are already providing HA against one of the most common and likely failures of your environment, and that's the underlying storage subsystem. Remember, disks fail. Not if, they will. So planning for this is crucial. So how do you plan for it? Again, by using parity or mirroring in RAID or Spaces. Let's review the availability features of Spaces. I mentioned in section number two that you can create a spaces volume and increase the overall availability by using a mirror or parity on your volume. Why use one or the other? In a nutshell, mirroring provides the best resiliency as it copies data twice or thrice on separate disks. This increases the cost per gigabyte, obviously, but it also provides the best performance when a disk fails. Parity provides a cost-effective solution to increase the overall availability of storage. It does, however, partially or even severely impact performance of disk writes. I personally only recommend parity or the equivalent RAID 5 or 6 only when workloads are not write intensive like many databases. If you don't know the disk behavior of your app, skip parity and go to mirroring. You will not regret it. So a disk has failed, but you did an awesome job planning for this. You set up spaces with parity, your VMs didn't skip a beat. With parity, there is a performance degradation though. What can you do to mitigate this performance degradation? Well, you can move the VM disks to a healthy volume while the VM is running, and that is storage live migration. Storage live migration moves live copies of the VHD files of a VM from one volume to another. This is an online move, so the VM does not have to be powered off for this to take place. A typical use case for this is when a drive in a volume fails. You would then use the storage live migration to move the VM to a healthy volume while the original volume is rebuilding. In the slide here, the VHD01 volume was impacted and we used storage live migration to move the disk to the new volume. Let me quickly demonstrate storage live migration here. So I have the failover cluster manager, see a number of VMs here, and I want to move the, this VM's disk. So I go to the settings of the VM, just to show you where the disks are. Right now they are on the E backslash VM and you see VM is running. So I'm going to be able to do this while the VM is running. I click on move, virtual machine storage. And in my case, I will specify SMB file share on a scale out file server. There it is. And you simply just drag the VHDs You'll see here I have the VHD file and I'll go ahead and move the configuration and I click start. Notice it starts saying starting virtual machine migration and that's it, it's done. In this case, this is a small virtual disk. If I go back to settings, you'll see now it's pointing to that scale out file server share. And this was storage live migration.
So a few important concepts in this lesson. First, drive failures are very likely and you should plan for it by using hardware, radar, spaces, mirror, or parity features. When a drive in a volume fails, you can use storage line migration to move the disks or a VM to a healthy volume without any interruption to the VM hosted on that volume. 